<laughs> it's our special 4th of July scare cast. <laughs> Set a course for the island of dead and buried treasures. Yes, Captain, I am! Tonight, as you celebrate the 4th of July weekend with fireworks, revolvers ablazing, and the birth of our nation, come have a few scares and celebrate the birth of our show, Dead and Buried Treasures. We're just as patriotic as anyone else. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I had a good night in Tartuga. <laughs> so let's blow some stuff up, eat some hot dogs, lock the doors, and bolt the windows. It's our special 4th of July show of dead and buried treasures. Ah, uh, what we need here is a musical interlude to kill some time. Try living with it. And do it in style with the three B's, baked beans, bourbon, and bigger scares than you can imagine. <laughs> I'll be back before you know it. WDBT Radio, the Pirate's Booty. Hello again, everyone. My name is Eric Sprouse, and I am the series creator of Dead and Buried Treasures, hosting tonight's official after show, the Pirate's Booty, from our fictitious radio station, WDBT. <laughs> and uh, we have just watched the conclusion of our most recent episode, The Terror, with Jack Nicholson and Boris Karloff. And for the next hour, or up to an hour, we will be taking your phone calls, your reaction to our latest episode, The Terror, uh, where we unveiled, in the studio that is, some new villains, uh, a continuing plot line in our mythology that goes on. Uh, we uh, toured the, uh, previewed the Whiskey Rebellion in Washington, Pennsylvania, southwestern Pennsylvania, about 30 miles from Pittsburgh. A great event held every year. This year they are going back to it. It was canceled last year because of uh, the COVID pandemic, but they are trying to have like a soft open and get back to a normal uh, life with that. Uh, they're, instead of doing a three-day event, they're doing a July 10th only, a one-day event. That'll be a lot of fun. And we'll be taking your feedback regarding tonight's calls. Tonight's show is sponsored once again by Redbubble.com, where you can get your official Dead and Buried Treasures merchandise, or as the young kids call it, merch. <laughs> I guess we're all just too lazy to complete words nowadays, so it's just merch instead of merchandise. Uh, like a, uh, a Captain Drake hoodie, a Davy Bones uh, laptop sleeve, a Jack uh, leggings. <laughs> uh, if you admire the show that much, you might as well buy a shower curtain. Uh, so we are tonight brought to you by RedRebel.com. Uh, and also we are brought to you by... Uh, Phoenix Comics and Toys, the home of our Dead and Buried Treasures fan club, where you can get the official Captain Drake decoder statue and a variant of that uh, this month for, for 4th of July. The Patriotic Pirate Decoder, featuring Captain Drake as Uncle Sam. And... Uh, uh, it's uh, sure to become a collector's item, from what I'm told, and they know what they're doing over there at Phoenix Comics and Toys because it's a limited edition and it will not be available after the month of July is over. So those are our sponsors for tonight's show. I have got my coffee. Uh, I'm here with my producer in the studio. Uh, Dave has his coffee. And see, I told you I'd bring you coffee, right? I mean... <laughs> I'm not some superstar. I'm here. I take care of you guys, man. So we got our coffee. See, the thing is, and they don't understand, uh, we're on after the show concludes, obviously, the after show, and we're live. So Dave is our, at the board taking the calls, and I answer them. And, uh, uh, you know, the show airs for the first time on our flagship station on Fridays at 11. The show's over at 2, and that's when we start the after show. Well... 
The thing is, we also have a simultaneous Facebook broadcast going on that actually starts an hour later. So it sh comes on at midnight and ends at three. So we're sometimes here in the studio till four taking your calls uh, at four in the morning on a Friday night, you know, and, and the thing that amazes me about it is, and I guess the show is, the proof is in the pudding. I, I, it's good because obviously, I mean, Dave will attest. <laughs> Dave will attest, our phone queue is 10 deep, and when one calls and I and you know we move on to the next call, it immediately lights up with another one. So we have calls coming in from all over the Pittsburgh area. Take that, Sven Gulli. <laughs> Take that, monkey in the mummy show. Uh, no, I, I jest, but uh, we get all these phone calls at, you know, in the middle of the night, you know, people watching the show and actually have questions for us. And so it's kind of nice, you know, it's to see the feedback as well as we get it, right? <laughs> well, I get some a free coffee, right? And I got mine here, like here. Mm. The nectar of the gods, man. At four o'clock in the morning, we need that kind of stuff. And it, what? I, okay, I, I am, I am, I am. We're gonna get to our, we're gonna get right to our calls because everybody says I talk too much. I got a producer for the Walk the Plank show, uh, Rich Kanji. Kanji, call him Rich Kanji. What the hell am I saying? Rich Kanji hosts our pre-show. He says you talk too much. I never get a chance to ask you enough social media questions. So now I talk really fast. I feel like one of those uh, fast talkers from the 1920s. Yeah, I got some medicine to sell you. You know, I got a pill. Yeah, see, that's what we're gonna do. Yeah. <laughs> hey. You know, you're the one who suggested the coffee. And now that I got it in my system, I talk fast, you know? So, mm. oh man, that is so good at three, four o'clock in the morning. Okay, uh, you wanna get right to the calls? Okay, well, let me supersede it. Uh, so we ended the show tonight. We uh, we were at the, we previewed the Whiskey Rebellion Festival that happens in uh, mid-July, July 10th. Right after the 4th of July, it's a lot of fun in the Pittsburgh area. I advise everybody to come out to it. It's a lot of fun. Uh, people come from all over to this thing, too. Uh, somebody called it the original Civil War, and I don't know if I'd go that far, but it was kind of a civil war that took place in America between two sides bickering over uh, you know, beer taxes, uh, liquor taxes, and things like that. And if you watch the show tonight, you understand why. If you haven't watched the show, shame on you. Go back and watch it. <laughs> I'm going to talk about the history of that tonight because I got too many phone calls in the queue and I want to make sure we get them all. So let's get to our first call, Dave. What do you say? All right. I like it. Okay. This one, uh, this one comes from, uh, where's this from, Dave? It's, oh, it's from uh, Harrisburg. Is that right? Hold on. Let me make sure my, you got my mic on, right? Yeah, you got that now? Okay. Just double checking some last second stuff that should have been done earlier in the studio, but here we go. So this is from uh, Frank in Harrisburg. Is that correct? Do I have that right? Okay, uh, this first call is from Harrisburg. Frank, how are you tonight? You're on the Pirate's Booty. Hi, Captain. Hi. Wow. wow. I just I just watched your uh, the newest episode mm -hmm. of Dead and Buried Treasures. Right. You right. know, um, the one with the Whiskey Rebellion. Right. And... Wow. The ending is, it, you know, it reminds me of uh, the Batman series. Mm -hmm. It's that good. You, with the villains, oh. uh, Jeremiah Wave and uh, Victor Rath. Victor Wave, right, yeah. I'm sorry. A anyway, these two new villains introduced, wow. I want more. I want more of this. This this is awesome. <laughs> I've watched uh, several different uh, uh, horror host shows. You know, you got uh, guys dressed looking like uh, you know, cross between Gene Simmons and Guar or something. You know, and all this stuff, and you got everybody dressed up like uh, different characters. And you know, that's good and all, but there's no solid story in there that's going to uh, catch my attention other than the movie they're showing. Mm -hmm. So, wow. That's all I got to say. I want more. I want more well, of this. Thank you. I want more of uh, these villains. I want, I, I want the 
whole whole works in this thing. You see? I, 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 yeah, this is great. This is good stuff, and I can't wait to see what you're going to do with these villains. Thank you. And I can't wait to see what you're going to do with Captain Drake and uh, the new characters coming up there that you're going to uh, that you've been teasing to introduce. Please give us more. Of, of this action-packed stuff. I want more of it. It's great. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Oh, thank you. So oh, thank you. I appreciate stuff. the kind words. Thank you very much. Uh, well, Frank, I, I don't even know how... I, that's a very big compliment. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. It, you know, um, we... I, I care... For, and, and somebody says, who writes all this? I said, I do. Uh, I, I carefully craft these characters. I carefully craft the mythology. I, I like to make everybody happy. See, back in the 90s and early 2000s, I was a big X-Files nut. I still am. I thought the show was... I even thought the Resurrection show was good. But uh, they had mythology episodes. They had standalones. And I like a blend, gentle blend of uh, both. Uh, we do about 20 episodes in a year. Uh, well, that's not true. What am I saying, 20 episodes? We do about 10 episodes a year maybe 11 if we're lucky and uh, last year we were uh, you know everybody was kind of thrown with the pandemic but we're trying to get back to normal we're trying to do one a month and that's what we do but you know what I have so many good I, I have so many well I hope they're good ideas I have so many ideas for the show it's hard to keep everybody at bay because everybody wants to do stuff and do stuff and I can only do one a month that's just the way it goes but, uh, yeah, we have a plot going on with these villains, where they're going to come from. We have a, and to be honest, I'll let you on a little teaser for our fans. There is a battle coming. Uh, it's not going to be in the next show. Uh, next show, we try to kidnap William Shatner. <laughs> from Steel City Comic Con. They're, they're one of our sponsors on the next show. Uh, and I think the episode after that is an issue, but I think the one after that, what was that? that we're talking July, maybe September for the uh, uh, the Renaissance Festival, if it returns. That's going to be our big battle show. So there is something coming. I appreciate the kind words. Uh, and we're going to see um, what happens with all of this. And thank you. I, 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 I do take a lot of time and write these episodes myself. Once in a while, I take some input from people. But uh, I, I do carefully craft some things. And we have to get it on the air in a month. So... This, okay, thank you so much, Frank. So, uh, where's this next call coming from? It's a surprise. Okay, it's a surprise. Okay, so this one is a surprise. Even I don't know who in the... He, Dave, you know, I think you've had too much coffee. <laughs> so, this next call is somebody... Uh, hello, you're on the Pirate's Booty, the official after show of Dead and Buried Treasures. Hello. Hello. Are you there? Oh. Oh, uh, Hello? Captain Drake, you serving dog, you? <laughs> no, Wolfie, not you. I'm talking to the captain. <laughs> hey, it's me, Sluggo, the fearless leader and beloved president of the Vortex. Oh, uh, Sluggo. .net. Um, I'm just calling to tell you that my Vortex viewers love your show. Well, thank you. All, all I know, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. <laughs> Just wanted to tell you to keep up the good work and ask if you'd be interested in uh, um, hiring a werewolf. He used to be in the Navy and everything. <laughs> uh, we could use a little extra cash so we can buy your DVD. <laughs> what do you say, Captain Drake's buddy old pal? Uh, uh, bye. Uh, <laughs> well, oh, wait. Oh, oh. Is she gone? Is she gone? Oh, that was awesome. I got to call her. That was, uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, the show airs on a lot of affiliates in the Pittsburgh area on uh, uh, BPTV, our flagship station, CUTV covering Fayette County, Washington County, Westmoreland, um, PCTV, WBXZ in Buffalo, uh, the Monster Channel and other places. Uh, and it also airs on a little network called The Vortex, which is the home for horror hosts. And that was... The president was that was that was that legit? Was it really? That was uh, Sluggo, the president of the Vortex Network, giving us a little shout out. Thank you so much, Sluggo. I'll see what I can work in. Maybe we can have a werewolf. I'm not sure how much werewolves, how well werewolves would do at sea on a full moon. I think they'd kill everybody on the ship. <laughs> 
<laughs> but uh, that was awesome. I'm so glad she called. How did you know that was coming in? Oh, you had that set. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for the kind words, Sluggo. It was always fun to talk to you. 412-691-3803 is the number for the Pirate's Booty. That's WDBT Radio. And coming up next, we have... Uh, uh, who is this? Is this uh, Ken from Arkansas? Is that correct? Am I saying that right? Ken from Arkansas. Hello, Ken. How are you tonight? Ahoy, Captain. Ahoy. I saw your latest commercial for your new decoder statue. Thank you. I was actually, actually, I have the, excuse me, I have the first two statues, you know, the Santa Drake and your original statue. Mm -hmm. I'm a member of the fan club, and I was wondering, cool. since it will be a collector's item, when is the possible, when's the latest that I could possibly order it so I don't miss out? Um, also, where do I get it? Wh who do I order from? <laughs> Uh, well, you know, uh, that decoder statue is created by the talented folks. And when I say talented folks, I say I mean Rob Fleck uh, at Phoenix Comics and Toys. And I believe he operates out of Dallas, Texas. Uh, why it's not Dallas Comics and Toys, I have no idea. That You'd have to ask the, the man Rob there. But uh, he's a very talented artist who creates uh, horror host statues for... Uh, the minions out there who host uh, horror films all across the country. Uh, you know, he does them for... Jeez, oh, I don't even know. I, there's so many he does them for. But he uh, has uh, developed our fan club where you can get the uh, Dakota Drake statue and you can get it through Phoenix Comics and Toys. And like I said, and like... Was it Frank? Frank's question? Oh, Ken? Ken from Arkansas, right. His question was, uh, how do you get it? Contact them, Phoenix Comics and Toys. Uh, you can Google them, you get on the internet, get on the intranet, intranet, <laughs> on the web thing, on the Google, and uh, you can contact them uh, for the statue. I'm telling you right now, I'm told that it will be a collector's item because um, they only have a limited amount available, and they don't have many left, from what I'm told by Rob. They've been selling like hotcakes. Uh, this is the Patriotic Pirate Decoder Edition. It is a variant of the original one for the fan club. It features, of course, Captain Drake. But this time, instead of dressed like a pirate, he is dressed like Uncle Sam. Complete with a top hat, an American flag, and Jack at the base launching fireworks in red, white, and blue. And uh, it looks like America threw up on it. <laughs> but uh, in all seriousness, it's a great-looking statue. It's uh, very colorful and... He's even used a special paint to bring out the vibrancy in the blues on that. It's a it's a really sweet statue, and I'm glad you asked about it. Uh, it will be available until the end of July. So if you act now, you can get the statue. If you wait until August, it, it's gone. And uh, even if we have them left over, uh, he's going to triple the price on them. And uh, anyone's I, 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 he's yeah, what's that? Yeah, he told me that after July, if he has a couple left over, and he says he probably won't. He says they'll probably be gone about a week after the 4th because they've been going that fast. He says I'm numbered. Uh, if he has any left over, he's going to triple the price because they're collector's items. He's going to wreck the mold. <laughs> well, I don't know that. I hope he doesn't wreck the mold. I, you know, I, I got to get mine. I, I got to get mine now. I got to go in for my aunt and one for my mom. and I got to go now. But... Uh, that's uh, what's going on with the uh, pirate, patriotic pirate decoder. It will be available um, until the end of July. Uh, a patriotic month it is, you know, to order yours today. Uh, and they're worth it. Uh, there's also, we're planning mini statues of the cast soon. Um, that would be with uh, Professor Gertie as a mini. There is a mini one out there for uh, Jack me first officer and Davy Bones and that's a special one because it comes with actual piece of paper a uh, parchment inside of it that you can unroll and, and see the decoder codes on how to decode something with the statue so that comes in handy um, and we're gonna have one for Professor Gertie we're gonna have one for uh, uh, Mirabella our mermaid on the show 
Uh, we're introducing a couple new characters. They're going to be running characters. <clears throat> uh, Jasper the Caretaker uh, gets his start in the next, no, the episode after next. And we have another character coming on. It's an old friend I worked with back when I was teaching out east in the Philadelphia Bloomsburg area. Uh, Leah Haas, uh, Haas, I believe. I know her, her name used to be Leah Wagonblot, uh, but it's now Leah Wagonblot Haas, I guess. She uh, uh, <laughs> She's going to be joining the cast in the fall as well. Uh, uh, we, we just don't know how. I worked with her on an old show called Frightening Fridays that I did when I was teaching at Bloomsburg University. And she played a, a girl on the show named Gigi the French Maid. And she was so talented and so funny and so sexy and so brilliant and so very... I had such a good time working with her among other cast members out there. Uh, I'm going to try to maybe get some of my other cast members on the show that have, uh, have moved on. Uh, I'd like to see if I can get... Dave, did I ever show you that Frightening Friday show? I did? Really? Uh, do you remember the one who did Cedric on there? The, the big gentleman who was uh, the butler or whatever? Yeah, I'd love to get him back on the show. He was a lot of fun, too. And Joel Stevenson. He played Igor. Uh, we, that was an old show. Uh, anyway, Leah and I was, were talking. She's actually had a baby now. She's a beautiful woman. And I, I'm going to get her on the show. And she says, well, you got to get me time to lose the baby weight. <laughs> I said, I will do that. So we are giving her some time, and she's going to join the show in the fall. We just don't know how. But uh, we're going to have her on the show, and it'll be a lot of fun. 412-691-3803 is the number. That's 412-691-3803 is the number for the Pirate's Booty, the official after show of Dead and Buried Treasures. And we will be right back after a word from our sponsor. Get your Dead and Buried Treasures merchandise at redbubble.com with the search words Dead and Buried Treasures. T-shirts, travel mugs, hoodies, blankets, phone cases, and much, much more. You too can even take a shower with Captain Calico Drake with a shower curtain. This is ridiculous. How is this even possible? That's redbubble.com and use the search words Dead and Buried Treasures. So what are you waiting for? You too can be as cool as a pirate. Yes, of course. That's redbubble.com and search for Dead and Buried Treasures, redbubble.com. That I thought I would dabble in the art world myself. That's redbubble.com and search for Dead and Buried Treasures. Uh, they'll no doubt want to pay top dollar for me service. The summer holidays are here, and it's time to celebrate them like a true American pirate. Presenting the limited edition Red, White, and Boo. Captain Calico Drake, Patriotic Decoder. After all, I am a true American hero. It's our Stars and Scars edition from Phoenix Comics and Toys. Star spangled from top to bottom, Captain Drake celebrates Memorial Day and the 4th of July like none other. And it's an exclusive only found here at Phoenix Comics and Toys, the home of our fan club. This is variant number three in the series, and it comes with a star-spangled red, white, and blue paint job, a removable American flag, me first officer Jack launching fireworks at the base, and a true salute to Uncle Sam, complete with beard and a new top hat design. Plus, our limited edition patriotic decoder also comes with a unique red, white, and blue doubloon. Say that three times really fast, mateys. <laughs> and it's exclusive to making me, of course, a true American hero. But you'll need to order quickly as this limited edition patriotic decoder will only be available until the end of July. Plus, if you're already a fan club member, you'll get another 20% off. <laughs> I guess you could call it the United Drake of Decoders. <laughs> so search for Phoenix Comics and Toys in Facebook and Etsy for this Scars and Stars Captain Calico Drake Patriotic Decoder and order today. <laughs> Special 4th of July scare cast. <laughs> Set a course for the island of dead and buried treasures. 
Yes, Captain! Aye, aye! Tonight, as you celebrate the 4th of July weekend with fireworks, revolvers ablazing, and the birth of our nation, come have a few scares and celebrate the birth of our show, Dead and Buried Treasures. We're just as patriotic as anyone else. Yeah! <laughs> it's like I had a good night in Tortuga. <laughs> so let's blow some stuff up, eat some hot dogs, lock the doors, and bolt the windows. It's our special 4th of July show of dead and buried treasures. Ah, uh, what we need here is a musical interlude to kill some time. Try living with it. And do it in style with the three B's. Baked beans, bourbon, and bigger scares than you can imagine. <laughs> I'll be back before you know it. Welcome back to the Pirate's Booty, WDBT Radio, our fictitious radio station. Uh, here at Dead and Buried Treasures, all things dead and buried, uh, where we do three shows here. Uh, Walk the Plank, our pre-show, the Pirate's Booty, our after show, and of course our main show, Dead and Buried Treasures. I am series creator, Eric Sprouse. I am the host of the show. I play Captain Calico Drake, and... Uh, we have a lot of fun producing that show. I'm here tonight. It's late. I got my coffee. I'm here with my producer, Dave, and we are in the studio taking your phone calls for about another 35 minutes. And we're going to try to keep this one hour, an hour long. And uh, I'm told I have a tendency to ramble. <laughs> I do, but you know what? It's my show, so I can do whatever I damn well please. <laughs> So I do have a tendency to ramble, so it makes me a good communicator. Actually, I'm a college professor by trade, so as a communication professor, I communicate well. Do I not? Yes, I know. Okay. <laughs> I still ramble. Dave says, I still ramble. Rich would probably say the same thing. So, let's get right back into our phone calls, shall we? Uh, just to wrap up that last one, uh, we had a que question regarding the uh, pirate decoder statues. Um, if you become a member of the fan club, you get... The Calico Drake statue. Um, the variant statues, which was Santa Drake, and you can't even get that anymore. And the uh, Patriotic Pirate Decoder, which is Uncle Sam. Um, those are variants, and those are available through the fan club. If you're fan club members, you get it at a discount. So that's the good news. So if you join the fan club, you know, you already get the, the Uncle Sam at 20% off. And I'm told that it will triple in price, if not quadruple, because I'm told they are selling out fast. So get yours today. Okay, let's get back to the phone lines, shall we? They are lit up. I can't believe that we have so many calls left. Oh, I know, but the sad thing is we're only on for another half hour or so. So, I mean, we're going to have to wrap it up and hope we can do what we can. Right? I know. Okay, this one uh, is from... Uh, Oh, okay. This is from Altoona. So this is actually fairly local, right? Where would they see the show? Oh, yeah. Oh. Stupid microphone. Sorry about that. Where would they see it? Oh, yeah. Facebook. Yeah. All right. Well, who knows? I mean, that he may be an Altoona cell phone, but he could be watching it in Pittsburgh, right? Okay. This one comes from Tony from Altoona, Pennsylvania. And, Tony, you're on the air at WDBT, the after show. Hey, Louise. Thank you for taking my call, Captain Drake. Absolutely, uh, Tony. What's going on? Did I hear you correctly that Steel City Con is sponsoring uh, a show in July that William Shatner is going to be on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> in a roundabout way. Tony, it's so funny that you say that because, um, yes, in July, there's some truth to that. Steel City Con is sponsoring our July show. It probably won't get on until the end of July, but it will be on in time for the August convention for Steel City. Uh, uh, how can I say this? I don't want to reveal plot details, Dave. I mean, hold on, give me another drink of coffee. Hmm. 
It's late. I can't believe the effect that's coffee. I'm, I'm not normally like this. I never thought really coffee affected me, but it does tonight, right? Um, yes, it will. We will be sponsored by Steel City Con uh, for the July show that takes place in August. There is a rumor out there that we are attempting to kidnap William Shatner and have him on the show, and that's where I'm going to leave that. <laughs> uh, you know, I. That's the truth. And uh, that's where we leave it. And um, we're going to see about having William Shatner. Right? Right. And that's all I'm going to tell you. So there you go. Uh, 412-691-3803 is the number for the Pirate's Booty, the official after show of Dead and Buried Treasures. What is it, what, what, what is it with the mic? What do you keep telling me? Okay. Is that better? Okay. Hey, I'm just, hey, your wish is my command. Whatever you need to do. All right, just keep us on the air. We have some more coffee. <laughs> 412-691-3803 is the number four of the Pirate's Booty WDPT Radio. This next call is from uh, Steve, Steve and Debbie Spencer. Where, where's it from? Uh, where? Where? Oh, uh, for, for serious? From our nation's capital? Is that correct? Down in Washington, D.C. Steve and Debbie Spencer. Hello, you're on the air with the Pirate's Booty. What can we do tonight? Ahoy, Captain. Ahoy, how are you? I really loved when you hosted Plan 9 from Outer Space. Oh, thank you. I absolutely love the robotic dog you introduced on there. Oh, absolutely. Uh, Scallywag. Right, yeah. I'm glad you watched. Scallywag? Yes, yes. My daughter is just going bonkers over him. <laughs> My question is, will he be back on the show as well? Mm -hmm. And <laughs> where can I get one? <laughs> ah, yes, uh, Scallywag. Uh, was a new character we introduced in the last episode. Thank you for that call. Uh, Debbie, I appreciate that. And I tell Steve thank you as well. Um, Steve wasn't on there. Right. Uh, yes, Scallywag is our newest creation. He is a uh, not a robotic dog on the show, but he is an animated uh, product that we put together uh, for the show. Uh, I wanted to have a little dog on the show. You know, every uh, ship, pirate ship, and I'm not even kidding you. I have a book here called The Ultimate Pirate Guide. And it's really cool. They tell you how to speak. They tell you the dialogue. They tell you what all the parts of the ship were. Every ship has a, a dog on it. And a cat, actually, too. Did you know that? All right, yeah. So uh, we invented Scallywag. And um, uh, you're in luck, maybe, if you act quick. Uh, you, we actually found him uh, at Christmas time at a local walmart believe it or not and he actually comes with a santa hat on and no patch obviously and his scarf and he sings christmas carols and he talks and he's all funny and he's meant for kids you know and and i had the idea of well we'll stick a pirate hat on him and a patch and we'll keep the scarf you know and we'll make him a piratey dog we will you know and uh so that's kind of how he evolved on the show but you know, it couldn't hurt. I, I'm sure if you did a search, a Google search, or even on Amazon, you look for them, uh, animated dog, you know, maybe on uh, Walmart's website, you might have a better chance on there. Um, and, but he sings Christmas carols. So if your daughter's ordering him to be, if your daughter wants him to be like piratey, it's not going to happen. But if you want him to sing Christmas carols and such, he is a great little toy. I like to spread a little Christmas cheer by barking loud for all to hear. Um, and he stands about uh, oh, three and a half feet tall. I mean, he's tall. He's a big dog. Oh, yeah. Like, in reality, he would easily be a 75-pound dog. Don't you think, Dave? What do you think? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say easy, 75 pounds, but he's a Christmassy thing. We found him uh, two Christmases ago, right? Yeah, two Christmases ago. 
And uh, it took us that long. We wrote an episode for him, and the rest was history. He became Scallywag. So, uh, yes, he will be back on the show. Uh, all of our characters will be back on the show. But as you heard tonight in our t- cliffhanger tonight, somebody somewhere on the ship is a double agent. Uh, how, how did it, how was the phrase? Someone in Drake's life. Right. So that could be anybody we've had on the show, too. That could have been um, Drake's ex-wife. He, she was on the show. Uh was it last time or two episodes ago? Yeah, two episodes ago. Uh, so who are the suspects? Her, Scallywag, Jack, Davy Bones, Professor Gertie, uh, Reggie. Um, somebody is a, I don't know who else is there, right? So somebody somewhere is going to be a double agent. Does that mean we'll say goodbye to him? I doubt it. We'll work it out somehow. But uh, somebody somewhere is working for the villains. What? Ah, I'm going to have to keel haul them. <laughs> so, yes, so Scallywag will be back. 412-691-3803 is the number for the official after show, The Pirate's Booty. And we are sponsored once again by Redbubble. And for all your uh, merchandise, merch, got to say it right so the kids get it right, merch, merch on the show. Um, so if you want a hoodie or a laptop sleeve or uh, a clock... I still have yet to see anybody buy. You know what, Dave? I hate to. See, I still have anybody to see anybody buy the shower curtain. No, I, I, I haven't heard any feedback. I, I haven't bought it. I'm not that conceited. I think I got the clock and I got a shirt. Yeah, but all the proceeds go to the ASPCA during this pandemic to help our four-legged friends. So think about that whenever you're buying it. Uh, every single proceed goes to the pandemic, uh, goes to uh, the ASPCA during the pandemic to help pets and their survival during those horrible, horrible times. It, what? <laughs> Do you know? <laughs> Dave, my producer over in the booth, says he has uh, the uh, Calico Drake shower curtain so he can take a shower with Calico Drake. <laughs> Uh, do you now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Sure you do. I, I want to see you taking a shower with the shower curtain. Like, get your phone, and I want to see that. Right. Okay. I, that's. I, I will. I will definitely make time for that day. Four one two six nine one three eight three eight zero three is the number for the Pirates Booty, the official after show for Dead and Buried Treasures. Our queue is still full. If you can't get through. Uh, and you end up getting a voicemail, please leave a message. We utilize those as well on both the pre and after shows. This next call is coming from Scooter from the Uniontown area. Is that right? Is that Scooter coming from Uniontown? Scooter coming from Uniontown. How are you, Scooter? Hey there, Captain Drake. Ahoy. Ahoy. We show on Facebook this weekend because we miss it here in Fayette County. Is there absolutely no way you will be back on Channel 77? We miss it. What can we do? Well, yeah. Um, uh, how can I say that? Yes, uh, we will not be on Channel 77. They have restructured the channel in Fayette County. Sad to say. Uh, so, you know, I mean, it's just like your breakup, you know, no hard feelings. We move on. I'm not vindictive. Uh, they, uh, put our show on for a few months and that was nice, but they've decided to go another direction. And we're not the only horror host that suffered that too. Uh, the spooky specter has a show on in Fayette County called uh, fright night theater. And now he's, I, I don't know what he's doing. I think he's totally fa- uh, Facebook now, but, uh, so we have other avenues. Uh, we are there are rumors out there that we're going to be opening up in the Moon Township area. There's rumors out there that we're going to be on the Venango County area, uh, public access. There are rumors that we're going to be on Stream Media TV. We are trying to cut a deal right now, and of course we're still going to be on all of our vi- viable networks: WBXZ, uh, the Monster Channel, the Vortex with Sluggo and the gang. Um, our flagship station, BPTV, PCTV. But as for your dilemma, Scooter, in the Uniontown area, now here is the solution to that. 
CUTV still carries our show. Now, CUTV is the college television station at California University of Pennsylvania. They uh, air our show Wednesday afternoons uh, from noon until probably about 4.30 when they do the whole kit. Uh, you know, noon to 12.30 is our pre-show. 12.30, Dead and Buried Treasures comes on. It runs about three hours till 3.30. And then, of course, the Pirate's Booty After Show goes until about 4.30. Uh, so a good friend of mine, Gary Smith down there, runs the show. He And they still air the show down there on CUTV. Now, CUTV in the Fayette County area is channel... Oh, I always get this backwards. I think it's 17 in Fayette County, 62 in Washington County. It's also on in Westmoreland County too, I believe, but that would be channel 17 as well. It's on uh, Atlantic Broadband Cable. So you can still see us in Fayette County Wednesday afternoons uh, at noon. Now, when school goes back into session, and I think it is, uh, I don't know what the, I don't know any of the COVID uh, answers, but I think it's gonna go back in session with on-ground classes and whatnot in the fall if it hasn't already. And when that happens, then they will have the manpower to go back to their regular schedule of putting us on sometime during the week. When is that? Probably Friday night, we're looking at um, about eight o'clock, I would guess. With the pre-show, then the show would come on at 8.30 until 11.30, and then 11.30 until midnight would be the post uh, show, the after show. That's what I would guess in the fall. As for right now, we are still on Wednesday afternoons at noon. So set your DVRs. <laughs> if you work at that time, who knows? If you're still at home doing stuff online, check us out. Uh, you got a horror movie uh, on in the afternoon on uh, Wednesdays, and uh, it's a lot of fun with the gang at CUTV. <clears throat> I used to work there. Do you know that, Dave? Oh, yeah, back in the day, I used to work there. About, uh, oh, geez, it's been a long time. Almost, uh, about, oh, about 20 years ago. Yeah, I used to work there, and I used to run the TV station. We were the number one college TV station in the country at that time. I don't know what they are now. But back then, I took that very seriously. I was the GM down there, the general manager for the TV station, and we ran it and did well, I guess, uh, you know, we had all these shows going and it was number one in the country. Yep. I was always sad they never built a statue down there or something to commemorate that, you know. The Vulcan basketball team, the ladies basketball team, won two national championships down there. And I know somebody else won another championship down there, another women's sport. I don't know what it was. The volleyball or something? I don't know. But they have these big statues down there for that. But they never did anything for Cal U, for CUTV. We were ahead of our time. We were really ahead of our time down there. And Gary inherited a wonderful TV station, still does a lot of wonderful things. And um, we're so thankful to be on at my alma mater. Yeah, it's really nice. I get a lot of compliments down there. People still watch on there. It's awesome. All right, <laughs> this next call, call comes from Joe Pickles. <laughs> Is that right, Joe Pickles? Joe Pickles. Where, where's he calling from? Oh, he's calling from... Pickles, where? Wyoming. There's a town called Pickles, Wyoming? It, well, that's true. There is a Dillsburg in Pennsylvania. I actually went to that event. Yeah, in Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, they drop like a giant pickle on New Year's Eve, like they dropped the ball. I went to that a few years ago. Yeah. So this one comes from Joe in Wyoming. Is that correct? Joe, thank you for calling the Pirate's Booty. You're on with Eric Sprouse. How are you tonight? Hello, Captain Drake. Ahoy. I'm a first time caller. Hello. I've watched your show for a very long time. I didn't get a chance to say this, but congratulations on your award last year. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm glad people remember that. We busted our ass. Uh, we continue to do that. I'm not even mincing words here. Um, but we, we really work hard on that show. And when we got that award, it, come completely, it came completely... I didn't even know we were nominated. I'll be honest, I had no clue. And Dave Cable, my uh, GM over at BPTV, surprised me when uh, he brought me on there to give the award. And it was all during COVID and... A whole bunch of it was all 
you know, what was it, uh, uh, you know, all virtual last year. So that really was a big thing. Thank you so much for remembering. It's, it's very deserving. Thank you. And a follow-up to something one of your previous callers have already said. You're, you are a quality broadcast that oh. should go on network television, like uh, sci-fi or, or something like that. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> uh, you know what? I'll be honest with you. <clears throat> there are plans in the works. I'm not going to say who, what, when, where, why, but that's not as far-fetched as you think. So I'll just leave it at that because I don't want to jinx anything. But thank you for the kind words. That's always appreciated. Well, I've, I've moved around quite a bit in my life because uh, I was a military brat. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've seen a lot of other horror host shows and you blow them out of the water. <laughs> no, no pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> I should make you one of my writers. <laughs> no pun intended. I blow them out of the water. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate that. That's really nice of you to say. <laughs> you, you, know, you, you have good audio and you have good video. Mm -hmm. And it's evident that you clean up some of your uh, movie points to make them a good quality broadcast. I we do. put them all together on the show, too. I do, I do. We actually clean up the prints. We brighten the screen a bit. We try to get rid of some of the problem areas. Uh, there's a number of, you know, when you host these public domain movies, a lot of movies out there are really bad. I found nothing but bad copies of The Terror, but I tried to clean it up and make it enjoyable to watch. You know, there's a couple of horror hosts out there that make fun of the movies. And, you know, I don't like to do that. I like to talk about what actually went into them. There's still a piece of our history. Karloff, Nicholson, Vincent Price, Abbott, Costello, Lon Chaney, Bela Lugosi. They were big, big stars. And just because they're gone, and they're not forgotten. And you don't have to make fun of them all the time. Those movies, they tried to make them very serious back then in the day. So I appreciate the kind words. I really do try to clean up the prints, too. My question is this. Right. I like to watch you guys on the Monster Channel because uh, their connection with Apple TV and Roku. Mm -hmm. I also like to watch your show on my 60-inch screen instead of my phone. <laughs> right, yeah. I also catch them on the Vortex once in a while as well, but because, uh, you know, I like the chat room. Crew. Right. They're, they're good people. Yeah, yeah, they are. Yeah. Have you ever considered getting your own Roku channel or streaming service because, uh, you know, I think it's deserving and it's about time you do that, you know? Yeah. Well, you know what we have, I, I and, I, and I'm and i all for it. I think it's a great idea. Uh, I just uh, don't quite know how to do that. Uh, I know that I had a phone call. We, we just started calling. We just contacted Stream TV. Uh, I don't even know what that is. I don't know if that's a channel or whatever, but I know that a buddy of mine who does his horror hosting from Venango County, uh, he was on the show, uh, who does the Chiller Night Theater show, Jack Shadow, does his show on Stream TV. And, I, and I've been told by uh, my producer, Rich Kanji, from the pre-show, it's not a bad avenue to follow to get a Roku channel or something like that. I'm like, oh, I'm all up for it. Let's do it. How do I do it? So we do have research out there working right now to see if we can correct that. We'll... We'll see if we can't do it. I think that'd be a lot of fun, don't you? Hell yeah, that'd be great. The more the merrier. Hmm. Sorry, coffee. 412 691 3803 is the number for the Pirate's Booty, the official after show of Dead and Buried Treasures, sponsored once again by Redbubble and Phoenix Comics and Toys. Uh, this next call comes from Chuck in Indiana. Is that right? I got that right? Chuck in Indiana. How are things out there in Indiana tonight, Chuck? Hello. Hey, Captain. This is Chuck from Indianapolis. Yeah, well, um, nice to see you. <laughs> you know, I, I was just thinking, I love the way you've made Davy Bones the big gossip on the ship. Mm -hmm. You know, it's hysterical when he listens in on conversations and gives us two cents. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I also love the history of the film uh, that he does for every episode. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering, do you guys do the research yourself? 
Uh, yeah, you know what we do. And uh, I researched that uh, f- from three different sources. IMDB, uh, which I found out we just landed on there. Dead and Buried Treasures is on there now. I'm going to have to do some updating with that. Uh, Wikipedia. I don't recommend that to my students at all. I am a college friend. I don't even use Wikipedia, but it's a nice, because anybody can update that. I like to be on there. And uh, just a general Google search to see what I can find out from the masses out there about movies over the years. And we use that as all part of the research. Yeah, absolutely. So I do all the research on there. Myself, I do. And it's uh, a lot of fun. So, yeah, to answer your question, I hope that answers that. Uh, and, 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 and you know what? I, I'm going to continue doing that. Uh, the nice thing, I get a lot of positive feedback about when we, um, do the, uh, research movie info parts of the show. Everybody loves the trivia. They can win prizes and there's a lot of prizes out there that people win, you know, and things like that. But, uh, you know, it's, it's really nice, too, to get recognized for the research we do. See, the thing, my complaint about a lot of hosts, and I'm just going to get on my soapbox. <laughs> I know, right? I'm going to get on my soapbox. It must be the coffee, Dave. Um, Dave's my producer here in the studio. But one of my comments are people make fun of these public domain movies. And it's okay to do that. And I think we can have a little bit of lightheartedness. But... You know, people put farts during the show and and, and, blah, blah, and stuff like that during the show. And, like, some people out there, some of the true fanatics, like to see how these movies were made and what we've evolved out of. I mean, look at the Dracula movie, Universal Monsters, Dracula, Frankenstein, The Mummy. Uh, some of the Abbott and Costello movies are meant to be funny, but those movies were made back then, and they are meant to be scary, just like The Ghoul. You know, the ghoul, they found a print in the uh, 90s and some, they thought it was lost forever. They found one of the master prints. They cleaned it up and put it on the air for the first time. These movies are made to be good movies. Now, of course, it was a different time a hundred years ago when Karloff took stage. uh, it's, 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 It's actually 90 years ago they made Dracula, 1931. And they made Frankenstein in 1931, you know, so they're making all these scary movies, you know. They were meant to be scary, but I I don't really think it's nice, I guess, is the word I'm looking for. I don't know, appropriate. I mean, they're doing for laughs. I'm not going to downplay the other horror hosts, but I mean, they they like to be funny and they like to look back and make funny noises and everything. I like to clean up the print and kind of save the film for posterity and show people what it was really like, you know? And it might be bad, it might be horrible. You know, it's just like the one this week where somebody caught a metal chamber and a revolver they were using jack nicholson opened up a revolver there was a metal chamber instead of a pellet or whatever i don't know i don't know history i don't know guns like that but um you know just to show the movie for what it was you know and i i really like that and i think that's something that we could all learn looking back and looking at these classic films and see how they were made and instead of making fun of them you recognize them for what they were trying to do with these classic, classic, legendary stars that kids today, some kids today, don't even know who the hell Boris Karloff was, or uh, they think it's a type of vodka, or J- even Jack Nicholson, believe it or not. If it wasn't for the Joker, I'm not sure anybody would underst- would even know who he is uh, today, like a 15, 20-year-old today. So, because, hey, he hasn't made a movie for a long time. You know, I think he's retired. Even Sean Connery, James Bond, they know him as James Bond, or maybe... Uh, Indiana Jones's father and even that's a stretch because I got people out there that are like 17 my niece has no idea who Tom Cruise is so she sure as hell wouldn't know who Indiana Jones was they wouldn't even know who Captain Kirk was it's just a generation gap you know so I, I think it's important to show some of these films from the past and what they were like back in the day right uh, well, we have, we're, we're almost out of time, so we're going to take one more call before we call it a night. This last call comes from uh, David, and I think he's calling from uh, North, what is this? Northwestern PA. David calling from Northwestern PA. Hello, David, you're on the Pirate's Booty. What can we do? Hi, Captain. Hi. My name is Scooter. I live about two oh, hours sorry. outside of Pittsburgh in Edinburgh, Pennsylvania. Right. I've heard of the Whiskey Rebellion that you talked about on your show tonight, mm-hmm. and I've always wanted to attend. 
Oh, well, yeah, the Whiskey Rebellion was, is, a, is a wonderful event, and I thought it was a nice tie-in with us because it goes back to the 1700s. The 1700s are when pirates ruled the seas, and uh, I might even do a little walking around. Come find me at the Whiskey Rebellion July 10th, and maybe we'll give a prize out to somebody. I haven't talked about that yet, but we'll see. I'm glad we could uh, preview the show for you. Oh, and I'm sorry, but... tell me a little bit uh, more about it again? And you talked about being there mm-hmm. and leading a tour of some sort. Uh, can you tell me what that... Can you elaborate a little bit more about that and tell me what that's, that's about, please? I'm really interested in it. Yes. Uh, I, first of all, I want to apologize. I, I had you as Dave in the queue, but your name is Scooter, I'm told. <laughs> sorry, Scooter. Um, yes, I uh, might be giving a tour uh at the whiskey rebellion i but the thing is i don't think it's we're running out of time it's going to be july 10th it's more condensed i don't think i'll be doing it then however it's more likely that i will be giving some type of ghost tour as captain calico drake at the washington county uh, not the whiskey rebellion but the ghost tours that they have at the bradford museum or the lemoyne museum and it's along the same lines of what they do for the Whiskey Rebellion. It's a ghost tour to show the, some of the history that went on in that town when uh, the rebels who made liquor rose up and fought, well, intended to fight General George Washington until he moved 6,000 troops into town. And so there's a lot of history in that town with ghosts and uh, whatnot. And I've been, uh, I found out that I'm a fifth generation relative of actual David Bradford, who was the gentleman who commanded the 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 rise up against general washington so i might do a little ghost tour of me own so uh we'll keep you on top of that you know just hello yeah okay yep yeah thank you sure have a good night sure sorry thank you about thank you scooter i appreciate the phone call um so yeah i might be doing uh, some kind of a ghost tour um for halloween or when we get closer to october We'll see. We'll let you know. We'll bring it up on the show. Uh, but yeah, if we do that, I'd love to have some of the fans or viewers come out and see me and go on a tour with yours truly as we walk through the hidden grounds of what used to be the stomping grounds of the Whiskey Rebellion. <laughs> but we'll have more on that later. <laughs> Dave, I'm telling you, this coffee has more caffeine in it than anything I've ever experienced. I'm like wide awake right now. Huh? Mm-hmm. Not even kidding. And, uh, well, yeah, I see that. Hey, not bad. Hey, it's been a full hour, folks. And we thank you for uh, all your phone calls this month. Uh, call If you didn't get through, please leave voicemails. We use them as occasional vo- viewer voicemail for the show. And we will have uh, more messages for you during the show next month. And we appreciate the phone calls. Thank you to my producer, uh, Dave, over here in the booth. Thank you to one of my, uh, to uh, Rich Kanji uh, for Walk the Plank. Thank you to Davey Bones, Jack, uh, Professor Gertie, uh, Dana Messino Kanji. Uh, thank you to everybody who's helped out on this show this month. And thank you to the folks over at the Bradford and Lemoyne Museums for allowing us to bring our cameras in uh, in our show this week, or uh, this month, and uh, preview the Whiskey Rebellion. That is July 10th, everyone. Come on out for a fun time. I'm sure you'll have a blast. Thank you again for tuning in to uh, The Pirate's Booty, the official after show for Dead and Buried Treasures, where we take your booty calls for up to an hour after the show ends. See you next month. It's a pirate's life for me. And remember, Dead and Buried Treasures, where it's Halloween all year long. We'll see you next time. Good night.